No? You know, they said it's probably in your cash from one of the things you did before. Uh, wait, so in terms of the, the Vimeo thing. So guys, welcome to the vlog. We are out here in Marbella with Bobby. Bobby, say hi. What's up? <laughs> um, yeah, let's go outside. So as I said, we are out here in Marbella. Now we are working on two things this morning. It is actually the last day here, or I guess the last full day. Completely forgot to vlog um, all the way leading up to now, but uh, Bob is actually working on building the new IG Media website. I have had, I've had countless, just like actually ridiculous amounts of people um, tell me that, hey, do you know your website's down? Do you know your website's down? Do you know your website's down? So, um, yes, I know my website's down. Um, and uh, let me tell you kind of the story and uh, what happened. Bob. Sorry. Bob, do you yeah. basically want to tell them what you texted me? like three months ago about the website. Yeah, so what we found out is that the website actually got hacked and it was full with links to very, well, let's say explicit websites. <laughs> um, I tried, I, I managed to remove most of it, but we just couldn't log in anymore. Uh, so if, if you guys don't know, Bob's main business is he has a very, very su successful, well, actually probably one of the most successful web design agencies slash software agencies in Holland. Anyways, back yeah, to your back, back to my story. Um, we managed to remove most of the links, but Actually, the only way to really fix it is completely redo the website. So what we did for for the time being was just remove the website, uh, and now we're just making a new one. So as I said, that was around three months ago. So for the last three months, I have not had a website. Tons of people have messaged me. They're like, bro, you know, you don't have a website, blah, blah. And to me, it was to the point where I just found it amusing because in the last 45 days, I have doubled my retainers from my agency. So this month we'll hit around 50, 55K. Now, obviously you guys follow me on Instagram. You'd know that two days ago at the time of recording this, I actually signed a 4,000 pound a month client and a 7,800 pound a month client. So that is, what's that? Like 11,000, he also laughs at my math, 11,800 pounds, which is like 15, $16,000, right? In one day. Uh, and it was back-to-back -back meetings as well. So as I said, in the last 45 days, I've really just doubled my agency um, retainers and I've did that all without a website okay so yes I know my freaking website is down Bob's uh, just building out the new one so Bob's building out that so he is building out that and I am actually building out his case study funnel so I'm building out his case study funnel so he can get more high ticket coaching and consulting clients through and we're also setting up some retargeting ads for people that have already gone to his other offering uh, as well as his Instagram, his Facebook page, his website, et cetera, et cetera. We're building, out, we're, build, uh, we're building out a couple audiences to drive traffic to that case study funnel so he can start generating some discovery calls. Uh, and then that's number one. And the number two is he has a 75, it's $75 a month, right? Yeah. $75 a month uh, coaching, uh, um, coaching mentoring program. So look, not many people can afford his one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting services, uh, which is, you know, understandable, it's pretty similar to me. So he actually went ahead and created a $75 a month. Uh, I think it's one hour call a week, right? Yeah. Uh, and then he's constantly posting updates and stuff like that in there. So he went ahead and built out, uh, built out his Facebook mentoring group. So, so basically I am uh, doing a bunch of retargeting, setting up some retargeting ads. We got a bunch of testimonials from his current um, customers, his current members. So we're running those. So as I said, Bob's helping me out. I'm helping him out. That's how it works. And uh, yeah, I'll take you along for the rest of the day. Okay, I'll take some time for that to populate. But you don't have any mailing lists or anything like that? Okay. Um, Not worth using. Okay. Uh, create audience, custom audience. All right, quick work break. By the way, I gotta give you guys a tour of this place, but uh, quick work break. Oh fuck, by the way, this thing has, uh, this place has two doors. Check it out. There's one and there's two. For some reason, <laughs> it's uh, it's pissed the ball off a, a couple times. But uh, yeah, quick work break. There's the uh, piece de resistance. So uh, yeah, I rented this thing out for uh, for a week. Got one last drive in it, and then uh, we're on. 
All oh, right, brunch all done. Obviously, I forgot to record. Uh, seriously, like big, big shout out to like vloggers. I don't know how the fuck you guys like document every single like step, food, you know, like step, bite, conversation, everything. Yeah, props to you guys. And and a lot of vloggers like lug around a huge fucking camera setup all day. Don't know how you guys do it, but uh, yeah, let me show you where uh, where we're staying. So we're staying in this place called Puerto Romano. Uh, so we're staying in an Airbnb apartments all the way back there. But this is like a hotel resort. So uh, it's pretty cool. There's uh, like a golf course. There's like ridiculously nice uh, tennis courts. There's like seven restaurants, gym, pretty much everything you could ever want here. Um, but also having an apartment. So it's, it's pretty dope. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a little tour of the place. So as I said, this is an Airbnb, um, but it's within this like resort thing. So this is like a permanent re permanent residence type thing in uh, Puerto Romano. So first things first is I missed my flight uh, from London to Malaga, which is close to the airport. Uh, I missed my flight on the Sunday. Bob was meant to come the next day on the Monday morning. So my flight changed from Sunday evening to Monday evening. So. He got here before me, so basically that means the fucker took the master bedroom, uh, which is annoying because that's two years in a row. Last year I lost on, uh, basically we came to Marbella exactly a year ago. And uh, last year I lost on, um, I think we did like rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or like flip the coin. Uh, and this year I lost because I missed my flight. So cost me a further 600 pounds to, uh, to book a new business, ca uh, business class flight out to Marbella, so I lost 600 pounds and I lost the master bedroom, so that kind of stung, but I'll still give you guys a tour. Now, this place is extremely messy, like ridiculously messy, so sorry for that, guys. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the kitchen, all pretty standard, to be honest. Uh, let me go ahead and turn on some lights here, right? Pretty, pretty standard stuff. Uh, so then we have uh, the master bedroom, um, as you can see. Pretty cool, a uh, little cool spot to meditate. Obviously a proper fucking bed, which I'm very envious of. There's some weird paintings in here, which I am um, not the biggest fan of, but hey ho. Then we move into my bathroom. Okay, all pretty standard, as I said. Um, then we move into my bedroom. As you can see, this, this is what is so goddamn annoying. It's two single beds put together. I literally, woke up at 3 a.m. the other day and I shat myself because I rolled into the crack, split the two beds in half and landed on the floor, so. By the way, also, keep in mind my shoes are so squeaky. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is like the main area we work in. Some of the paintings in here, they're interesting. I guess it depends on, on your style. Anyways, uh, this is the main sort of like desk we work on. As you can see, Bob and I are pretty much matching, matching 15 inch computers. Not entirely matching in terms of mics, but pretty similar. Uh, we're also matching in terms of headphones. I bought Bob these headphones last year, and then they were so good that I'm like, fuck, I want a pair for myself. So uh, I got a pair for myself too. That is where I work pretty much every single day, that little like dedicated desk. Yeah, just another little spa, haven't really used that. Then we come out here into the patio. We work out here quite a bit as well, to be honest, um, so yeah. Chill out here, work out here. It's a, it's a cool little spa. You can see down, down into, uh, into the pool and other areas of uh, kind of like the resort. So uh, yeah, that, uh, that's pretty much the tour. That's, uh, that wraps it up for the tour. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna head off, drive the... Uh, we're gonna drive the Jaguar one more time uh, before we have to return it. And uh, yeah, take you guys with me. All right, so I know what you guys are thinking at this point. Yeah, man, that's a, that's a dope shirt. Right? Where can I pick up that shirt? Usually you guys ask me, hey, where's, where's that trouser from? Where's the watch from? You know, stuff like that. Well, you can't buy it, because it's my own. So, a lot of you guys know, once again, if you follow me on Instagram, I sound like a broken record the past few videos, but if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been working with my first ever, kind of like proper uh, client of my agency, Athlete. Uh, they actually, they're sick. They actually bought an entire factory in Pakistan because they help a lot of influencers now launch their own sort of e-commerce and stuff like that. So I partnered up with them, partnered up with an old uh, school friend of mine uh, who actually did all the designs. Shout out to Jaime. 
Um, and yeah, this, this is basically just a mock-up. So this is the Private Victories one. You can see Private Victories Season 1. And on the back, we got Private Victories as well. So for a first mock-up, I'm not going to lie, I'm super happy with it. I wasn't expecting it to come out this well. Now look, I have a sort of a distinct way of wearing my shirts, I guess. Like I know a lot of people don't like the baggy fit. I love baggy fit. Um, I like kind of like the neck thing to be quite loose. Um, but yeah, this is a this is kind of the mock-up. I think it's gonna be available in around like two months or so. So the clothing line is called Gadgy. And um, yeah, just uh, thought I'd keep you guys updated and uh, you'll see it in like two months or so anyways. All right, there we go. Drop top. Let's go. So we are sat in the Jaguar F Type 2018 V6. Now, um, yeah, a lot of people ask, hey, Iman, why don't you have a car yet? To be honest, the first reason is I live in, well, actually, the first reason is I don't have a driver's license. So when you've seen me with Odie, for example, when you see me with Bob, like, you know, that's why I'm not driving because I don't have a driver's license yet. Um, I've been procrastinating because I know I won't be getting a car soon. Um, but yeah, by the end of the year, I'll have my driver's license. So um, that's issue number one. Number two is in my current place in London, there's no private parking or there's no underground parking, right? And for the cars that I want to get, realistically, like I'd want my own private parking or I'd want under, underground parking, something along those lines. So that is number two. Number three is if you live in London, it's like living in New York or like Chicago. It's like having a car there is quite literally the stupidest thing in the world. Um, so I would have a car knowing full well that I'm wasting money and uh, knowing full well that like I'm barely ever going to use it. Um, and I know that, okay? Um, then that brings us to kind of like our next few issues is I'm 18, 18 years old with zero experience. Now, obviously I'm going to be insuring my mom's crappy car uh, for the next like six to nine months just to get some, you know, me on there on record. Um, but after that, uh, in terms of financing, I'll be all right because what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy the car cash, but I'm going to loan the car from my company to me and then I can choose my own loan rate, my own loan percentage. So that'll probably be, you know, I can do as low as like 1.5%, for example. Um, so that's totally fine and I'll pay back my company um, and do it that way. That's one of the benefits of, of having a company, for example. That's that's what you did when you bought your house, right? House, yeah. yeah, that's what he did when he bought his house. Um, so that is that. The only other real issue is insurance. Now, as I said, you know, first time driver, I'm probably gonna be picking up a supercar. So the cars I'm looking at are a F-Type um, SVR. Right, so F-type like this, except um, it wouldn't be a V6, it's a V8, the V8 supercharged basically. Um, either looking at that, or I'm gonna be getting most likely a McLaren 570S Spider. It's on the same price level as like, for example, a Ferrari 458, a Lamborghini Huracan, but in my opinion, it's just better. Like obviously I'll have to wait until I actually sit in these cars and drive them, right now it's all, talking to other other car owners um, and just kind of taking a look at their the aesthetics and the specs and stuff and, and stuff like that but you know I like to be a, a little bit different um, so that's why I really wouldn't want a Lamborghini Huracan uh, I wouldn't want a Huracan or a 458 something like that um, even though they're still amazing cars I just I think the McLaren 570s is, is beautiful so that is that uh, so F-Type SVR McLaren 570s uh, Maybe a Bentley Bentayga. Uh, also been taking a look at that, um, or a Range Rover Autobiography, right? So between any of those, all, it all depends on when I come back to London next year after Bali. I'm going to Bali for two months. Uh, when I come back to London next year, am I getting offices? Is my new place? Sorry. <laughs> uh, does my new place have underground or private parking? And also, what's the insurance gonna be like? I've been talking to a couple different insurance brokers as well, so that's kind of the update on my car and where it is at. The car, for me, is the last aspect of, I guess, the materialistic stuff. After the car is done, at that point, I've got in mind the way I see it. I've got in mind, I've bought the fucking fun shit I've wanted to buy, and at that point, 
I'll probably just sell everything. Like honestly, I, I, I can definitely see myself getting to the point where once I buy the car a year or two years later, I'll probably just sell it in Uber everywhere. Um, probably even some of the jewelry, I might just sell some of my jewelry. I mean, jewelry to me, as I said, it's fashion. Like I just love fashion considering I'm starting a clothing line. Um, but still, I might just even sell most of it. Pulled up to a dope little spa. Whatever the hell that is. Probably over there. Yeah, let's let's go over there. Oh no, I guess we uh we got some like fat Brits or some shit like that came to uh came to Marbella and left that here. Look how uh, look how beautiful this place is though. Bob, you know what's next? IG Media Vineyards. All right. That was a lot of fun. It's a cute car, but uh, gonna say goodbye. Gonna get a V8 supercharged or McLaren 570S. All right, so Bobby is just about to book his flights to Bali. So this is a this is the first time you're flying long haul, right? It is actually, yeah. So yeah, he's a uh, gets cheeky Singapore airline flights in. So. Excuse me being shirtless, we're literally just about to head off to the beach for the last time, but um, if you guys don't already know, I'm going to Bali uh, for two months, December and January, maybe extending that out to four months. Um, and yeah, heard some good stuff about Bali. In fact, one of my latest clients, a guy called Cameron Foos, the owner of Foos4 Trading, um, yeah, they signed on two weeks ago. Uh, with IG Media, he lived out there for quite a while and he's basically been traveling the world for the last two years and he said London, South Africa and Bali were his three favorite spots. So obviously been in London for like 16 years, uh, so now it's time to go uh, try out Bali. So also don't know if I told you guys, but um, if you guys know a guy called Nabil, he actually used to be Christian Guzman's videographer uh, for pretty much all of these summer shreddings. Uh, so he is coming along with me, uh, basically hired him as my videographer for the two months and then hopefully if he does well, a little bit longer after that. But uh, it's going to be him, me, Natasha, so I have a three bedroom villa. Actually, let me just show you guys. So this is the pad, it is in Changu, so I'm there from Thursday, November 29th to Tuesday, January 29th. And uh, I'll be honest, I thought going to Bali would be cheaper than London, I thought people went there to save money. Um, well, turns out two months, exactly 11 grand pounds, so 5,500 a month. My current spot in London is 4,000 pounds a month, so I mean, fuck it, I guess. Uh, I guess if it's a beautiful spot. So we got a three bedroom villa. As you can see, this is it. It is pretty, pretty sick. Uh, so three bedroom villa, like that. So as I said, I got a three bedroom villa, so one bedroom for Nabil, uh, my videographer, one bedroom for me and Natasha. And by the way, now that Nabil is here, that is um, basically there's gonna be daily videos. And also one of the other Nabil reasons that Nabil is uh, coming is, actually let me set this camera down and, and tell you. All right, so guys, here is the deal. Now, you guys know I talk about reforming the education system all the time, and um, I'm sure you know that there are a lot of uh, talkers out there. I think everyone wants to impact the world in their own way. Um, you know, just the way I always saw things was let's build a real business, let's build a successful business, and then from there I can go ahead and impact the world. Um, so, back to my point of reforming the education system. So in December, December slash January, I'm going to be sending $30,000 to sponsor three entrepreneurs, three promising entrepreneurs in underdeveloped countries. Now, you know, in order to do that, obviously there's going to be the sponsorship money, which will be $15,000. So basically $5,000 per person. Uh, and then there's going to be the costs associated for uh, both me and Nabil to actually fly out, document their stories, uh, basically just give a little bit more insight as to what they're going to do with that money. Now, um, you know, one person that I'd actually give it to uh, is one of my employees, is one of my employees, uh, and he, you know, it's so cool to see what he wants to do for his local community, and now that, you know, he works for me and he has a full-time wage with me, he can actually do that for both his local community and his family, uh, which is awesome to see. So, as I said, I'm going to be sponsoring three entrepreneurs, $5,000 each. Now, 
that's the end of this year, right? That's December. And that is, as I said, that's also one of the reasons Nabil is going to be coming out with me and whatnot. Um, and that's awesome, right? It's cute. <laughs> you know, a lot of, you know, $30,000 is a lot of money. But to me, that's still playing small. So from next year, I've decided that basically I'm going to go ahead and I still need to figure out the logistics of this. I'm going to be donating 10% of all company profits to the education system, to helping build schools in underdeveloped countries, to helping sponsor promising entrepreneurs in underdeveloped countries. And, um, you know, as I said, the logistics of this, I still need to figure out. I basically want to start a, fo a foundation, right? You know, a nonprofit foundation. And apparently it's quite hard to start a foundation. Um, and look, I feel as though this is the one missing link to the entrepreneurship space. You know, the entrepreneurship space is all about, hey, I am going to I'm going to make some money. You know, I'm going to take care of my family. Um, you know, I'm going to buy some nice jewelry, buy some nice cars, uh, pop bottles, you know, you know, finally make it, you know. And for me, it was always about, you know, taking care of my family. This year has been awesome. You know, I've bought the things that I've wanted to buy except for a car. <laughs> um, you know, I've bought the things that I've wanted to buy. I've, I've traveled to the place I've wanted to travel to. I was able to pay for my mom's divorce and you know, now she doesn't have to work. So I, I did everything that I wanted to do. Um, but this year I played small because this year I played for myself and for my family. Next year I'm playing for <laughs> a, a much bigger, a much bigger group, right? A much bigger purpose. Now, as I said, it's so cool to see because my goal with my online programs, you know, the online programs that I have, uh, as well as my training business is to give any man or woman with enough determination, with enough discipline, the chance to carve out the life that they've always wanted. Right? So that's, you know, my online programs, to me, the reason I'm so passionate about it and the reason I'm so passionate about teaching is that is the first step in reforming the, uh, reforming the education system. Right? But you know, what about the people that they can't afford the programs? Right? What about the people who, you know, can't afford a computer, can't afford a phone, right? I'm not talking about the people who, who struggle to get, uh, you know, into into a course and online programs, some stuff like that. I'm talking about the people who generally can't afford to get, you know, don't even get a seat at the table. They don't even get a level playing field. That's the demographic that I want to reach next. 10% profit doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that next year I'm aiming for $3 million profit, right? So if I hit $3 million profit, from the training business, then $300,000 of that is going to go into this foundation, right? Going to go into these charitable causes, right? Because as I said, you know, you, it's hard to explain when you're first starting out because when you first start out, you look at Instagram, you look at, you look at online and you go, fuck, like, you know, of course, if I had all these watches, of course, if I had these cars, of course, if I was able to, you know, go out to dinner and not even worry about the price, of course, if I was, if I was able to do all those things, I'd be happy. And you get it. And at a certain point, it's like, how many more watches do you want to buy? How many more cars do you want to buy? How much more, like, <laughs> how much more expensive do you want the food to get? Right? How much bigger do you want the villa to be? Right? And then at that point, it becomes, okay, what can I do? How can I actually impact? Right. And I, I always knew this, this is the process that was going to, you know, that there was, uh, that I was going to follow. I always knew the process was going to be first, you know, take care of bare necessities for me and my family, right? Basically my mom. And then after that, I knew it was going to be take care of the luxuries for me and my family. And I did that, or, you know, my family and, and, you know, the people I consider my family. Um, and I did that. And then it was like, okay, I did that. You know, I got mine. What's next. Right. And as I said, this is, what we're doing next year with the company, right? Where we're taking 10% of company profits and putting it straight back into the education system, right? And um, it's funny, someone said, a, a replied to one of my Instagram uh, stories, they're like, Iman, you say the education system is corrupt, it's broken, you know, why are you putting money back into the education system? I believe the education system for probably 80%, 90% of, of those watching is corrupt, it is broken. Right. If you live in a, in a, you know, a high, even a relatively high GDP country. Yeah, of course the education system is broken. There's so many better options out there for you. Right. If honestly, if you have a computer, if you have internet, if you have basically a computer and internet, there are 
a million different options that are better for you than going down the college route, right? Going down the formal education route or going down the job route. But I'm talking about the people that, as I said, don't, have, don't even have a seat at the table. They don't even have an opportunity, right? And that's where I want the money to go, right? So from a high level, my online programs, that is a chance for someone to literally make hundred from that knowledge alone, make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, right? For a tiny little fee in comparison, right? I'm, I'm reforming the education system with my online programs. That's step number one. These YouTube videos, I'm sorry, I haven't put as much time into them. If you know, I've been scaling my business and my business has been growing quite quickly, right? And I haven't, I need a system for this, right? I need to get back and put in a new system for this. Right. And luckily I have Nabil coming with me in January, uh, or December and January, and he's going to be managing all the YouTube content. Right. So I just realized it's so funny. All you guys always mention, you're like, Iman, you always say so at the beginning of your Instagram stories. I think the new thing is, is right. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the plan guys. Right. And there it is again. <laughs> there it is again. Um, that's kind of the plan. I just want to fill you guys in on, what it is that we're doing, where I'm taking the company, um, where I feel as though this space is really lacking, um, which is the charitable causes. Like, like, you know, it's like, I think every person who g gives back, right? Once they learn something, they give back and they teach. I think the intention is always to help. But to me, it was always, it was always like, you know, how can we do this on a bigger scale? And how can we not just say that we're trying to help people? or say that we're trying to make a difference and like actually fucking make a difference, you know, be the person to actually stand up and really make a fucking difference. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's an update on uh, where things are going, where things are going for me right now is to the beach, had a long morning of work with Bob, um, or a long, long morning of work. I've just onboarded uh, quite a few new clients. So doing a lot of copywriting, um, and then I did a bit of work with Bob and now off to the beach to catch some uh, rays right before uh, our flight tomorrow. Whew. All right, so all straightened up, me and Bob looking sharp as fuck. Um, yeah, yeah, I got quite sunburned. Yeah, so we are on our way to uh, dinner. There's a cool little like plaza. There's a bunch of different like places out there. A um, couple, couple days ago, I went to Nobu. Uh, it's my second time ever. My first time was like a year ago. Um, so yeah, Nobu was also like one of those places where <laughs> I was like, fuck, once I make some money, I'll uh, definitely head out there. Uh, and it was pretty good. It was like 300 euros for the both of us. Um, there he is, uh, plugging away, <laughs> making some cash money. Um, but uh, 300 euros, but uh, definitely uh, kind of like crossed off uh, or ticked off the bucket list. Last time I went there, it was like, I think I ordered like two pieces of maki or some shit like that. So um, yeah, that was uh, that was a year ago. So uh, now off to uh, get some steak, something like that. I actually just realized I wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, Bob and I both, um, not this morning, we woke up at 7 a.m. this morning, but usually we wake up at 5.30. Uh, he wakes up at like 6 because we have different like, obviously he has to get into his office a bit later than me. But what we do when we're on, this, on these trips and just in general, we front load the work. So from 5.30 until 1 o'clock, it's work, 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 and then um, and then after that, it's fun, right? So usually, when we're both, uh, you know, back at our, our, our normal day to day, um, you know, one onwards is usually meetings, shit like that. Um, but I think that's real, uh, you know, that's the real key is like, you know, if you can knock out those early mornings and get it done properly, then you can enjoy the rest of the day guilt free, really. Also, I'm really looking forward to having Nabil in Bali because he'll be able to document the mornings at 5.30 a.m. that Billy, my personal trainer, sees where I literally feel as though I've just been punched in the face um, rather than all this stuff you see, which is like the, the nice cars and the beach and the restaurants. Uh, he'll be able to document like the truth of... Um, thank you. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, he'll be able to document the truth of uh, what the day-to-day -day is like. So I'm excited for that. And uh, I'm actually doing with one of my clients, a guy called Cameron Foos. He's hosting, uh, he hosts a show called The Iconic. So we're going to be doing one of those on me in October. And uh, I think that'll be like a day in the life. So that will show you what a real day-to-day -day looks like. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that vlog. Uh, we are an hour and 10 minutes roughly uh, until we basically have to leave. So I'm uh, gonna export this video and really just wanna end off the video by saying sorry, you know, sorry I haven't uploaded in so long. I say this all the time, systems are scalable. Like if you think that you're just gonna, if you don't have a system for your fitness or your health, right? That's why I have a personal trainer that comes to my house at 5.40 a.m. every single morning, brings in my food ready-made uh, from a meal prep company. Like that that's a system. I don't have to think about that anymore because look, to be honest, I probably really wouldn't go to the gym. I definitely wouldn't go to the gym five times a week and with the intensity and eat clean if uh, I didn't have that system in place. In the same way, look, I, in the past few months, I've been letting go uh, in terms of YouTube because I don't have a system in place. I say this all the time, systems are scalable. The issue is when you get more on your plate. When you get more on your plate, that's when the issues start to arise. Look, if you don't have much in your in your field of, of field of focus right now, it may not be an issue. You know, if you don't have a system for your health, if you don't have a system for your content distribution, if you don't have a system for your uh, your marketing agency and, 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 and you know, your, your, your workflow, it may not be an issue for you right now at two clients, but once you reach five, six, seven clients with ad spends of 50,000 plus per month, that's when you reach issues. You know, you may not have issue right now with your YouTube or your content distribution, but when you have 14 other things that need immediate attention or 14 other things that if you focus on, that'll bring long-term results, <laughs> then you need a system, right? That's when your systems will break and you need better new systems. So unfortunately that is advice that I have not followed um, in the past few months, but I am working on it. So all in all, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys enjoyed that little update as to, uh, first of all, I don't think that I've told you guys about Bali. So um, yeah, I'm going to Bali for uh, pretty much January or uh, December and January. And I also hope you guys enjoyed that update on where the company is going um, and my vision for it. Anyone who knows me personally knows my 40 year vision and why I'm doing all of this. Um, but you know, that's my next one, two, three year vision. And uh, we're just gonna keep going. You know, next year 300,000. You're after that a million. You're after that 2 million. You're after that 3 million, 4 million, hopefully. You know, so that's the goal. That's, uh, that's the vision. Um, when I say I wanna reform the education system, I'm, I'm not just saying it. It's not just cause it sounds cool. It's <laughs> Long term, I think it's really the only thing that will keep me sane, the only thing that will keep me pushing to the levels that I want to push to. Because I don't think any normal person <laughs> is going to do that. So that's that. And um, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and click like down below and also leave a video down, uh, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be checking the comments this time. Um, what do you want me to upload as my next video? So love you guys and I'll see you.